this is one of the <coughs> very, very important events for us, and it's something that we didn't expect. It came as a complete surprise. Uh, we have our instructor for the program, and I'd like her to come forward, Dr. Jim and Kim, and baby. <laughs> Last year, when we began the internship for the Asian Social Justice Program, uh, we got together with the people from CASE and conducted a search to really get a dynamic instructor who could not only tell the story of the Korean comfort women, but also make our students feel that they had a certain obligation to this particular group of women. And it really turned out well. We had at our last uh, ceremony where our interns came to report on the comfort women, they had interviewed a very, very powerful and emotional response saying, this is not just a course for us. This is much more than a course. We want to go out and do something about it. <clears throat> and when you have your students saying, we want to go out and do something about it, and we're not giving them extra credit, and we're not giving them any kind of bonus, it no, we have achieved something. One of the people who has really helped us with that, uh, and I'd like to, Don Chan Kim, uh, the president of CASE, would you like to stand up so at least our students will recognize you? I know everybody else. And a person who's almost like a brother to me, because we call each other almost every day to speak about what we're going to plan for today, uh, change in part from K's. Uh, none of this really works out unless we have the backing of a very strong administration. And we're so fortunate at Queensborough College to have that backing. And I have to introduce the person who provides that support, the president of Queensborough Community College, Dr. Diane Cole. And welcome. For those of you, and I know it's not your first visit to Queensboro, but it's a special visit. And I want to thank you for being part of this important acknowledgement of the work that's been done by Dr. Flug in, in collaboration with the Korean Civic Empowerment Group and, of course, our wonderful, wonderful students who have really become the voices for people who need to have their stories told and shared. So I thank you. We've had a great response from the people in our public service, our legislators, who have really been inspired by our students and by this story, by this story of justice. Long overdue, but justice. And I have to thank you, Senator Stavisky, Assemblyman Bronstein, and Assemblyman Kim, and so many others who've come together, and we appreciate this acknowledgement on the part of the New York State Legislature. So again, I thank you. Our students, our students are here. Could you stand up, our students, please, who did the uh, internship program? Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'd you. also like to <coughs> introduce one other legislator who is here. Uh, Assemblyman Chuck Levine, he's from Nassau County, but we still talk to him. He originally came from Queens, but uh, he's been a very, very strong supporter. And now I'd like to call up uh, the Assemblyman. One minute. Before I do that, I want to point out one thing that really shouldn't go unnoticed. Every one of the Assembly people here uh, has their title, and it's honorable, honorable, honorable. We have one assembly person here who goes beyond that, and it's honorable professor. And I'd like to call Assemblyman Ron Kim up here for a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ron Kim made the mistake of telling me that he had once gone to Korea and visited the Comfort Women House of Sharing. That immediately meant he was on our payroll, and he would work for us. And he has come in to the intern class and lectured 
to the students, not only just giving facts, but reactions, a very powerful one. Uh, I just met him in the hall. I said, you realize you did such a good job. You're going to come back next semester and the semester <laughs> after and after, which means you'll be elected constantly. And we'll see to that. But should any of you be interested in seeing his presentation, you can go on YouTube, look up Kupferberg Holocaust Center, Asian Social Justice Program. And thank you so much for that. And now I'd like to call up the Assemblyman for our district, Assemblyman Ed Bronstein. Dr. Flug, uh, on both behalf of myself and my colleagues here today, uh, we wanted to introduce a resolution uh, in the New York State Legislature commemorating the work that you do along with CASE uh, with this great internship program to help bring awareness uh, about the comfort women situation to the greater community. Uh, the importance of this issue is particularly evident uh, in recent events and recent news. Uh, I joined Ron recently for a protest outside the Japanese Embassy for the mayor of Osaka, um, Toru Hashimoto's uh, disgusting comments justifying, in his own terms, justifying the Japanese actions during World War II. Um, so it's, it's very clear that more work needs to be done, and by engaging more than just the Asian community, but the entire community uh, to bring awareness about this issue, we will eventually force Japan to recognize the mistakes it made in the past and offer a formal apology to the victims. So I'm very proud to offer this resolution. I'm, I'm, after all my colleagues speak, I'm sure we'll take a picture. Um, everybody was involved. I mean, Chuck Levine reached out to me, uh, the senator, and, and Ron worked with me very carefully. Um, I had the honor of being able to introduce it under my name because uh, Queensborough Community College is in my district. So. I want to thank everybody who's involved uh, in this issue, and uh, I look forward to working with everybody to continue the fight moving forward uh, to make sure that justice is served uh, in the end. So thank you very much. Thank, thanks, Arthur, and thanks to Queensboro Community College, one of the great colleges, and thanks as well to Case which is doing such a remarkable job of sticking up for human rights at a time when we need human rights to be fought for, and to the interns as well. Some might ask, why should the events of 80 and 80 plus years ago, because it's 1931 when the Imperial Japanese Army starts to invade much of Asia, why should those events matter to us today? And the answer is, if they don't matter to us today, they will never matter to us tomorrow. And what occurred in 1931 with the invasion, and what occurred also with the, the invasions of the, the Nazi Germans, was that a philosophy, a philosophy that is so dangerous to us as human beings, and dangerous, dangerous to us as Americans, uh, began to take hold. And that philosophy was that one person is superior, inherently superior, racially superior to another because the Japanese who invaded and the Germans who invaded viewed themselves as being supermen and everyone else was of secondary importance and once someone is inherently superior to someone else how easy does it become to enslave the weaker person and how easy does it become to be able to justify the worst of humanity being visited upon those who are the weakest. So we have seen this. We need only look around the walls to know about genocide. So what each of you have done by keeping this issue alive and providing a voice to those, many of whom can no longer speak, is well worth the recognition that we give you today. We cannot tell you how proud we are of what you have done, because what you have done makes the world safer for tomorrow. And that's not a bad piece of business to be involved with. So to each of you, thank you very much and most sincerely, and keep up the outstanding work. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Dr. Arthur Flug, uh, Dr. Cole, staff members QCC, 
uh, Case, Mr. Dong Suk Kim, uh, Dong Chan Kim, and of course we're joined by Paul Yu from the Korean American Association of Queens, and Chairwoman Esther uh, Lee as well. And I join my call. I also want to give a first happy birthday to Senator Tobias <laughs> Stevens. <laughs> Before I forget, um, you know, I all the. This is the second cohort of students that are graduating, and you guys are walking away uh, from this class now with the historical um, knowledge of what happened. But I wanted to share with you, uh, just very briefly, the lessons that I took away from, from uh, interacting with the Kung Fu woman when I was in Korea many years ago. And, and really, that is a story of perseverance. And when I think about this Kung Fu woman, the one word comes to, comes to my mind, which is grit. And it's about having perseverance and, and, and the passion to, toward a long-term goal. This woman, from month to month, they will show up and, and without losing any enthusiasm, without losing a beat, and then keeping enthusiasm month to month, they will show up and protest and really fight to make sure that their voices are heard. And these are senior citizens that have been doing this for so many years. And, and for the next generation, I think there's a lesson to be learned. Uh, about about following, uh, I guess you know, for, for to them, their sense of what's right in this world, and that's that's a value I think for this graduating class. Um, I think you guys can really learn from um, as you move on into the next phases of your life. Um, so I do want to thank again, you, and everyone in this, everyone is collaborating uh, with this project because without you guys, there is no story to be heard. Um, you know, we only have a handful of, of survivors left and they're going to be coming here on July 11th. Um, but it's the real intangible effect of you guys being the ambassadors of their voices that will continue um, their fight into the future. So I'm very, very, you know, proud of the fact that we're hosting this in QCC and I look forward to coming back and engaging more students uh, in the future. Thank you. Dr. Flub and everybody, I'm not going to repeat all the names, but I think it's important that we come together and if we look around this room and every time I'm here, and I was here about a month ago, uh, they all represent a story, whether it be the, the Armenian genocide or the Ukraine or the Nanjing massacre. Um, and you have a lot in common with what happened in China because uh, uh, the Japanese government really has not acknowledged uh, what they did. But it's interesting that we come together at the Holocaust Center at Queensboro because Queensboro has been such a leader in the community on so many issues. Queensboro Community College represents the community, and I'm proud to say it's in my Senate district. And it's because of Dr. Call, and I congratulate her on her inauguration at the graduation, uh, and everybody else associated with Queensboro, which is a true community college. It's a college that does more than just educate students. I was a history teacher uh, many, many years ago, and the kids read this stuff in the books. But there's nothing like coming and listening to people tell their experiences. What, it, what used to be called oral history. People talk about what happened. And it brings meaningful experiences to light. It's much better that way, frankly, than reading about it in a, uh, in a textbook. So I thank Queensboro for being on the forefront, not just at the Holocaust Center, but throughout the educational community. This is where it's happening. And I was saying when I came in and I parked up the hill a little bit, I remember many, many years ago when there were nothing but Quonset huts here. And the, what is now the art gallery was the administration building. And students studied in these horrible Quonset huts. And today, this is such a leading on the cutting edge of educational technology. Uh, you've had such a wonderful group of presidents, I must say, 
Dr. Call is continuing in uh, a long tradition of outstanding educational leaders. And this is such an exciting place. And uh, let us hope that in the future, we continue for many years to come to tell the story. Because if we don't, who will? Thank you. Thank you. Well, you talked about oral, <coughs> oral history being the best way to teach it, and you're right, you're absolutely right. And having said that, all of you here are invited back here. We invite it back any day you want, but especially July 11th, 7 o'clock, here at the Holocaust Center, we are going to have two women, comfort women, flying from Korea to meet with our students, to meet with our instructors, to meet with the community, and tell their story so it won't be forgotten. And you never get anything more powerful than these women telling their stories. Um, about three weeks ago, it was 8 o'clock in the evening, we were at the case office through a Skype TV hookup. You, if you're 18 to 25, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you're more than that, you may have a problem. A Skype hookup, it was 8 o'clock at night. <clears throat> it was 8 o'clock at night, and it was 8 o'clock in Korea, but it was 8 o'clock in the morning. And we, our students, were interviewing these women. And one of the questions one of our students asked, was the very last question was, now that you've told me your story, what do you want me to do? Good question. And this elderly woman, 90, 93, 94, bent over, huddled down on the table, suddenly sits up, ramrod straight, and she says, I want you to know that for me, World War II has never ended, and it will not end until we get an apology, and that's what I want you to do. You can't get more effective teaching than that. So these women are coming back to Queensboro. They were here two years ago, but they're coming back in a much more powerful presentation because our students are now prepared for it. And this morning, I had two instructors come in and say, we'd like to include something dealing with the comfort women in our curriculum presentations for the coming year. So it is growing, it is getting better. I've already had four students say, when are you going to announce the Comfort Women internship because I want to sign up for it. So now, to make it official, we have to take a picture, so.